Hi, welcome to video number two in a series of training videos for MT Pro software. In this video, we are going to explain the details behind the layout designer portion of MT Pro. When you open up your MT Pro software, you'll see the home screen that you see on your current screen. To get into layout designer, you want to go to File, New, Layout Designer. And what you'll see is an internal program will open up inside of MT Pro that will show you a uh, various color background. In my case, I've got a blue background. Uh, but what you'll also see is various components that are available for uh, building um, assemblies or working with uh, partially completed assemblies and configuring those assemblies. So this portion of the software is really designed for people that want to design their own structures using our aluminum framing components and our uh, TS Plus and VarioFlow conveyor systems. First thing we'll do is we'll take a look at the option settings for the software. If you go to File, Options, first page you come to is your View page. Uh, you may want to take a look at setting your colors to the color numbers that I currently have for the background and the layout designer and so forth. And the way you do that is you can just click in the window to the right of the color. You can either choose a color from the, uh, the color uh, window here, or you can actually enter in the numbers that I have. You can literally type in these numbers to get to the colors that I use. I found that these colors are actually the, the easiest to use. They have the best contrast. Uh, it's just something I've been working with for quite a while. Next thing you want to look at is uh, the check boxes that I currently have on my screen here. Uh, at minimum, I would go ahead and check uh, these check boxes. You can play with the other ones, but uh, this is a good starting point. Next thing you want to take a look at is your code. You can set your 2D CAD exchange information, uh, but most importantly, uh, you want to take a look at your 3D CAD uh, exchange information. Since I have SolidWorks on my computer, I've selected uh, SolidWorks 2017 in the drop-down list for 3D CAD. There are a number of different CAD programs available. You just scroll through the list, find what you're looking for, and select that. And then right below there, you'll see 3D file exchange formats. Um, I keep mine set to a, a step file default. And then there are a couple of other checkboxes you're going to want to verify. Extended CAD function and rotate x-axis 90 degrees. Those are the two that I have checked. Uh, I would caution against checking anything else at this point uh, to verify that your outputs are going to work. I'll put a, a CAD file to your 3D modeling software or step file. Uh, make sure those work before you play with any of these other settings. Directories, you can uh, uh, share network uh, folders if you have multiple people using various libraries and uh, components in MT Pro. And there's also a miscellaneous tab that allows you to set various features and functions. In this case, uh, the check boxes that I have checked here are the ones that you're going to need and verify that you have English set as the language and USA set as the country. Once you've changed all your settings, click Apply and OK. From here, we're ready to get started and take a look at what the MT Pro Layout Designer uh, is capable of. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see Layout Designer Products. First tab we have is Product Catalogs. Next one is Library. Next one is Spaces. And the last one is Conflicts. We're going to start at the Product Catalog tab. Underneath that tab, you'll see five other tabs. Uh, we start with MGE, which in this case, uh, we're going to say that that stands for Mechanical General Elements. And then we go to the MPS tab. This uh, stands for Manual Production Systems, and we'll get into that a little later. Then we have a TS conveyor tab, Twin Strand Conveyor pallet based conveyor system, and then VF, which is our VarioFlow chain based conveyor. 
And then the last tab you'll see here is a man model. So we have a woman and a man available to pull into your screen uh, to do ergo and uh, uh, lean studies. These uh, uh, man models are very configurable. Uh, every part of their uh, body can be moved into a uh, appropriate position for the uh, project or job that you're working on to verify that you're, you're building an ergonomic and lean assembly. We're going to go back to the MGE tab and we'll take a look at what you can do uh, using our uh, general aluminum structural framing. Underneath this tab, first thing you'll see is preferred sizes. This basically sets the size of the component that you'll be dragging onto your screen. Uh, in this case, I default to 1,000 millimeters uh, for the standard profile. For our EcoSafe height, which is our uh, guarding uh, uh, component, uh, I have some defaults set to 1,800 and 1,000. We'll get into, that to a little, uh, get into that a little later. Once you have that set, you can close sizes and then go right down to the catalog components, which you see on your screen here. I will take a look at what these menus on the left-hand side of your screen are used for. We're going to start with the MGE tab. Underneath the MGE tab, we have various uh, aluminum framing component sizes. You can choose the range that you want to use. Uh, we're going to start with the 45 range. This is the most profile size that's used in the United States. You click on 45 range. Once you click on that, you'll have four other boxes you can click on down below. Strut profiles will give you the various profiles that are available in our 45 series range. Uh, they start at the 45 by 45 and go all the way up to, uh, in this case, 90 by 360. There are various profiles available, including profiles that have uh, a radius uh, edge, solid size, sides, uh, and so forth. So there's various uh, components that are available to uh, use in your model. Next tab over are the connection components that are used for uh, this range of profile. We have gussets, uh, in connectors, quick connectors, and various other components uh, that we'll go into detail about a little later in the, uh, in the video series. Next tab over, uh, we've got joints which are actually movable joints that can be set at specific uh, angles based on the configuration that you're putting together. And then the last tab is uh, the caps and covers for the profile. And again, these are going to be for the 45 series. You'll find the same uh, information underneath the other uh, catalog components here. Very similar. And then down below we have Surface elements. Surface elements allow you to uh, actually insert, for instance, acrylic The next tab we'll take a look at is the MPS, the Manual Production Systems tab. This is where you can actually uh, once again, you can set the preferred sizes for this, uh, is the length, and uh, in this case, grab container rack width as a default. The MPS tab allows you to work with our round profile, which is called our eco shape tubing. There's various tube profiles that are available uh, to drag onto your screen. In addition to uh, our flow racks, we have our x -Lean flow rack and our lean series flow rack. And then we also have workstations, which allow you to use a pre-configured workstation as a starting point for your project. We have various types of workstations you can drag onto your screen and then uh, configure those to your requirements. And one of the last things you'll see under the MPS tab is the is workstation. This workstation is a complete workstation that gives you the ability to uh, track and guide a 
an operator into building a, a process of various components. Next, we're going to take a look at our TS tab. This is where you'll find our TS conveyors, uh, starting with our TS1, which is for loads up to three kilograms, our TS2+, plus, which is for loads up to 240 kilograms, and we transition over to our TS5, where we can uh, have loads up to 400 kilograms. And the last tab under TS is our active mover. Our active mover is a specialized conveyor that uh, uses magnetic motors uh, to move pallets around uh, a racetrack type system. Next tab is our VarioFlow tab, where we can design our flexible chain conveyors in aluminum stainless steel or full ESD uh, systems. Again, we can set preferred sizes. In this case, we have a lot of settings that we can change to use as a starting point when we're doing our designs. We can set our transportation height, system size. In this case, we have six different width uh, variable conveyor. We can set our chain size, our change type, we can set our change type, select the default speed, frequency for the country that the conveyor is going to be installed in, the required voltage based on the frequency, our curve angle, both for horizontal and vertical, standard length of a section uh, that we use when we're dragging the component onto the screen, and the distance between the leg sets. Various components are available as dragging components uh, for a VariaFlow conveyor. We have return sections, we have straight sections, drives, leg sets. All those can be pieced together on the screen. We'll go into more details in a later video training. Next thing we'll take a look at is the library tab. So click on the ability to drag in an assembly or component and create it your own custom library. You can set up various folders uh, for projects that you're working on and then reuse these assemblies as a starting point at a later time. If you move over to the spaces tab, you'll see where you can actually pull in components that can create rooms in your on your, on your uh, layout background. Uh, this is helpful when you're designing a system that needs to fit in a certain uh, space requirement. For instance, what we'll do is we'll drag the room onto the screen, and we'll take a look at what this looks like. We'll even turn on our grid background. So you can understand these are one meter grids. So this is roughly a four and a half by four and a half meter box to start with. These boxes can be uh, resized based on your requirements. And then you can use that as a, a room to actually design in. Uh, this, is, this is helpful when you're trying to show an end user or a customer what the layout will look like based on their uh, space, the space that they have available. We also have zones. You can create various zones uh, where you can actually design things on a zone and then move those designs uh, around in your model. And the, everything that's designed in that zone will move with that zone. Last thing you can do is import uh, a floor plan. So on the screen right now, you'll see a, the one meter by one meter grid. Uh, imagine importing a DWG or DXF of a building floor plan that can be overlaid onto this modeling surface. Uh, the, the floor plan may show you the, the walls, uh, the, the columns, the machines, the tools that are already in place that you need to design around. Um, so this can be very, very helpful in doing a, a 
only out of a conveyor system or multiple workstations and or a, and a, a complete assembly. This is the end of our video number two. Please watch the future videos where we'll go into more details on how to use MT Pro and the various uh, uh, components that are available to model with. Thank you.